I've laid out a series of Geisler tubes that were donated to the department by uh, Anne Marie Resnick, uh, who works over in plant and soil science. Uh, I'm going to drive them with a 1895 Rimkorf coil, and the ends are some of the ends are touching, and some of them aren't. Doesn't really matter. Uh, various different shapes with. Uh, different types of glass, some uranium uh, containing uh, treated glass. Uh, these two actually have liquid in them. Uh, this one is going to, I believe, fluoresce uh, when UV hits it. And I don't think that one does anything. That just kind of uh, uh, contains the discharge to that little curly section in the center. And this one here is actually quite interesting. It's See how that one goes. This is a railway tube or a paddle wheel. Uh, cathode ray tube, uh, originally used to demonstrate uh, the uh, concept that uh, electrons have momentum, although the effect that actually makes the wheel turn is not actually due to that. It's, uh, it's much more complicated, uh, and it's, uh, I believe, the same effect that uh, uh, explains uh, why radiometers uh, spin around in the sunlight. This next one is just a simple cathode ray tube, uh, cathode and anode on either side, and we'll get a nice beam of electrons in the tube when we light it up. And if we put a magnet near it, we can show that electrons are deflected in a magnetic field. Another cathode ray tube, uh, homemade, uh, and this looks like it has a different gas pressure in it, so we're actually going to get uh, a much tighter uh, beam of electrons. Another Crookes tube, uh, I believe it's called the double shadow effect. Uh, Basically, the source of electron is at the, the electrons is at the center of the tube, and you got a star, solid star on one end, and a hollow star on the other. Mm -hmm. 